Okay, Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem, okay, this is dedicated to Jerusalem, to know her abomination. Before the axe falls, God is sending out warnings. Never before the judgment happens, does it all, all of a sudden, without warning. And we're going to get into tonight a history lesson. Untempered, unadulterated history. And say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem. Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Cana. And Jerusalem is of Cana. Thy father was an Amorite, a Abram, and thy mother a Hittite. The Hittites were in the land. The land was promised to Abraham. That land was solely given to Abraham. But it was a land of Canaan. It was a land of the Hittites. And given promise to Abraham. And as for thy nativity. In the day thou was born. Thy navel was not cut. In biblical cord, we would say. Neither what was thou washed in water to supple thee. So here's a birth that, you know what? The birth happened, but who cares? And we hear about these stories today. We hear about... Babies are born, they're left in the bathroom, they're left in the garbage, they're left in, you know. Well, that's what Jerusalem was. It was born, but who really cares? God does. That was not salted at all. Now, being salted is, salted removes impurities, removes diseases. And what they would do when a baby was born, they would cut the umbilical cord and they would put the baby in salt. Remove the impurities, remove diseases. Salt is very healthy. Epsom salt bath is good for you. Salt water is good for you. Nor swallowed at all. Now you would find Jesus being wrapped in swaddling clothes for the shepherds to find as a sign. And swaddle means to be wrapped in clothing. That's all that means. None I pity thee. To do any of these things unto thee. Cut the navel, salted, wrapped you up in nice warm clothing. Verse 4 is a protection of the newborn baby. To have compassion upon thee. Again, resulting back into verse 4. But that was cast out in open field. <laughs> Again, I said, you hear about that today. Babies are born, they're cast out. Who cares? To the loathing of thy people. They hate you. They can't stand you in the day that thou was born. So when Jerusalem was founded as a city, a city of the Jebusites, hey, who cares about it? You know, it's just our city. And yet God thought enough upon it to promise it to his people. That land of Jerusalem is the land most faulted over. Fought over. Fought for. 
And yet the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are on that land, and that land belongs to God. And when I passed by thee, I saw thee polluted in thy own blood. Jerusalem under Canaan, under the Jebusites, was polluted with all kinds of gods. And killing of babies. Even Abram himself come out of a polluted land of the moon worship. Before God called him. I said unto thee when thou was in thy blood. Live. Yea, I say unto thee when thou was in thy blood. Again, repeat it. Live. How is that city going to live? It's going to live where the temple would be. God would God would tell Moses and the children of Israel in the place where I will set my name. The place where David purchased. Solomon built. The place where the feet of Jesus walked. I have caused thee to be I have caused thee to multiply as a bud of the field. Life. Solomon speaks about in the Song of Solomon about the bud of the field of springtime. That's particularly reason time of the Lord's going to come, I believe. Maybe. We could be looking at Jerusalem right now, Ezekiel 16, as the second advent going into the millennium. Thou has increased and waxing great. What person really doesn't know not about Jerusalem? What newspaper, what news media has not ever reported about Jerusalem? How many times in the Bible is Jerusalem mentioned? Thou art come to it. Excellent ornaments, not Christmas, the ornaments that the women would wear. Thy breasts are fashioned. That means the breasts are filled with milk. They've come to age to feed, supply, nutrients. Thy hair is grown, you come out of adolescence, you come into puberty. Whereas thou wast naked and bare no more. The God of Jerusalem to the Jebusites and the Canaanites, they didn't care. God does. Now when I passed by thee, and looked upon thee, behold, the time was the time of love. God is love. I spread my skirt over thee. I read my Bible, I read my three chapters, and I'm done. Did you miss the contact? Did you miss it? Take your Bible to Ruth. Ruth? Why Ruth? Ruth chapter 3, verse 9. Ruth has come in the middle of the night to Boaz. Ruth 3, 9. And he said unto who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth thy handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid. For thou art near kinsman. Her husband has died. And according to the Jewish law, Boaz is to marry her. That's what that... So when we come to Ezekiel, I spread my skirt over thee. That's God saying, I'm married to you. Beulah land. How many people sing Sweet Beulah Land and they don't know that Beulah 
means marriage. That's God saying to Jerusalem, you're mine. That's Ruth saying to Boaz, you're to take me. And cover thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, God swearing. And entered a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God. And thou became his mine, marriage. I washed thee with water, yea. I thoroughly, properly, completely washed away thy blood from thee. When, when a baby is born, it's full of blood. And the city of Jerusalem was filled with blood with murder. From thee. And I anointed thee with oil as Aaron would be anointed with oil. That's a Christ. Christ means anointed. Jesus Christ means Jesus the anointed one. Aaron was anointed and all the high priests were anointed with oil. That oil would be olive oil in which the land grew. I clothed thee also with broiled work and that's real fine stitchery. You know, you get those hats and the lettering on the back of the jacket, very fine stitchery. You go to your average mall, you would have somebody there who's got the special machines to do that. They didn't have machines back then. And shod thee with badger skin. You know what one of the skins of the tabernacle of Moses was? It was made of badger skin. And I girded thee about with fine linen. Fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. I'm not sure if the tabernacle had fine linen. And I clothed thee with silk. Silk comes from the uh, 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 moth. That's a fabric of the Orient. I deck thee also with ornaments, not Christmas. Now he's talking about the land. Do you realize in the middle of Jerusalem there's a building decked out with gold? Can you imagine how well that building shined in the afternoon sun? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. How much is shining? And there are people who come up to me. Well, the Bible says, let your shine, let your light shine. He ain't talking about you. He's talking about Jerusalem. He's talking about that temple. A city on a hill? That's Jerusalem. Not you. I, I, I got a thing. I say it. It's, it's one of the Mimi's pictures. And you're so vain. You think that verse is about you. Well, you know, we wouldn't do replacement theology, but we would take the place of Jerusalem. I place bracelets upon thy hands. There's nothing wrong with bracelets. As long as they're not given to gods and not worshipped. And a chain about thy neck, that's royalty throughout the Bible. Joseph got a chain. Daniel got a chain. Daniel was offered a chain. And I put a crown on thy forehead. Well, look at that. Wait a minute. I put a jewel on thy forehead. Now, the people of India, they, they go far as making a mark on the forehead. 
the men wore a, a, a box on their head of the scripture. The women wore a, a, a ribbon of a jewel on their forehead. It wasn't stapled to their forehead. They'll be doing that next. And earrings in their ears. And a beautiful crown upon thy head. This is how God sees Jerusalem. Not how you'll see him in the book of Lamentations. This is how God will see Jerusalem with Jesus Christ on David's throne. was decked with gold and silver. You know, isn't it silver that the Bible says that Solomon is just like rocks. <laughs> That's a piece of silver. Just throw it on the ground. Silver is a price of redemption. <laughs> It would be funny if, you know, if one of those stones that David got was a, was a piece of silver stone. The entire temple was gold. Solomon's utensils were was gold or silver. It fabricated the Queen of Sheba when she showed up. What attracted the Queen of Sheba? The, the wisdom of God, the royalty of God, not men were, oh, I let my light shine, I let my light shine. That's the problem when you go into the Gospel of Matthew as a Christian, it ain't for you. You run Ezekiel 16 with, with the city of Jerusalem, and you run it with what Jesus said, and then We'll get to later the destruction and misery of Jerusalem as Jesus will tell about the destruction and the misery of Jerusalem. And thine raiment was fine linen. Again, fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Wait to the saints, wait to the Jews have given a new heart, the new spirit, and God's spirit in them, and they're running around in this city. Jesus Christ. King of kings and Lord of lords. And Jerusalem decked out for Jesus, decked out for David, decked out for God. And silk. And that broad work. Same thing in verse 10. And does eat fine flour. Not just fine flour. That was part of the offerings. They were to bring fine flour for some of the offerings. And honey. Now honey was not to be burnt. But it revived Jonathan when he was hungry. And needed nourishment. It's a natural sweetener. And oil. And that's not petroleum oil. That's olive oil or oil olive which the land grew of wheat for fine flour of honey the bumblebees and olives for the oil Jerusalem is of God her own supply and without God there would be no supply but without God there is none we read last night about a very minor vine tree. Who wants the vine tree? God says, I've given it for fire. Why is it Jerusalem is a midst of all desert where there's no light? And that was exceedingly beautiful. And thou didst prosper into a kingdom. It's the city. And that renown went forth among the heathen, Gentiles, for thy beauty. 
And we're gonna start getting into trouble. For it was perfect through thy comeliness. And the Bible speaks about Lucifer was perfect in beauty and he had iniquity in him. That comeliness is the expression of your face. A comeliness of sorrow and dread when the doctor says, I've got bad news for you. And the comeliness of, of, of a woman that, uh, that her boyfriend gets down on his knees and opens up the ring and says, will you marry me? And the gladness of the comeliness when the boss says, hey, I'm going to promote you. And the comeliness of your face, you're going down the highway and you get a flat tire. Which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. But, that's a big word in the Bible. And we're going to stop right there. We're going to pick up the bad. We spoke about the good. But look at Ezekiel 16, 11. I deck thee with also with ornaments. How about 66 ornaments? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Revelation, 1st, 2nd Peter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I put bracelets upon thy hand. You ever look at some of the Bibles? They got they got little bands on them. The Bible Revelation says a seven sealed book. And I put a chain about thy neck. If you close your Bible, and this one has colorful kind of thing, but some Bibles the outer pages are gold. Are you open more to a deck of cards than you are the Word of God? 52 chapters in Jeremiah, 52 cards in a deck. If it's the bracelet of God, the King James Bible, is it upon thy hands? Is it something important as a chain upon thy neck? Or is the Bible a chain about your feet? Barbell or dumbbell? Would you rather be gold and silver or seek the gold and silver treasures of the Bible? We see Jerusalem as a beautiful city. But beauty doesn't last long in this world. Beauty is corrupted by Satan. There have been some wonderful women in Baptist churches who could sing for God. And they've taken their talent and given it to Satan in the world. And one such woman, I won't mention her name, but died in a bathtub. Died in misery. And look at Jerusalem today. You say, Sally, would you like to go to the holy city? I'm going to the holy city when Jesus Christ brings me. I'm not interested in it today. I don't want to go where Roman Catholic people, priests and idiots run around. I came out of that. I don't want to go back into it. I know what Arabians telling me who don't believe in God, believe in Allah telling me about the things of Jesus and all. No, 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 no. Wait for Jesus to bring me there. Wait for the 12 apostles to bring me there. And wait for them to tell me. Wouldn't it be great? And wouldn't it be interesting when we get to Jerusalem, when we get to the place of called Israel by Jesus Christ, 
Wouldn't it be interesting? Well, you know, everybody gather around over here. For all those who visited and came to the holy city, let me tell you, they told you I did. That, that, that did not happen there. Let me show you where it actually happened. <laughs> You know, let's go over to Tennessee and let's see how wrong that, that ark that the Gentiles built. I didn't tell them to build. How about we just say what the Bible says and let the Bible and let God tell us. Because can you imagine how wonderful if, if, that God says about Jerusalem right here now? Can you imagine how wonderful Jerusalem is going to be when Jesus brings us in and there's no more curse? Can you imagine the tomatoes? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you ima imagine if you read your Bible? When the curse is removed off the earth, can you imagine what those grapes are going to look like? In the land that God's given those Jews, when you can imagine the Bible says it took two men to carry a cluster of grapes in Joshua's time. Can you imagine what those grapes are going to look like then? They're going to be the size of bowling balls. How about let's wait for Jesus. And let's keep our eyes in the Bible. 